What's up guys, this is Grimmer back here, bringing you guys the latest episode review for Dr. Stone. Now, I say latest, but I know I am one episode behind. I'm sorry about that guys, just stuff been happening and everything, but we are back on schedule. The episode 8 review, this is of course the episode 7 review, which is very late. Episode 8, I did watch it, I will be making that review uh, in the next day or so and that video will be out in the next couple of days So I'm sorry about that. We will be back on schedule for episode 9 might even be a little early for episode 9 in all honesty Because i am been getting the links a little earlier uh, Than I was initially getting them and not watching them till Sunday. So anyways that being said so episode 7 right? Like this episode, you know why I like this episode Was the ending part of the episode not only that but this is right away introducing us to here's a bunch of characters and for anime only viewers this is something that says who is going to be important in this new village because at the beginning of the episode we take off at the end of the last episode uh senku saves kohaku from the tree thing uh, and she's like okay i kind of like you he keeps calling her a lioness she doesn't like that she's a warrior all that jazz right and at, in the end part, they're like, oh, well, you know, you saved my life and all this stuff, so maybe we could, uh, you know, you're looking for manpower. Well, you should come to my village sort of idea. We got plenty of people. And he's like, oh, okay, let's do this, right? So she picks up the hot water and all that stuff the, the, from the hot spring, trying to, you know, bring water down to her village for her sister, blah, blah, blah. Side story for later sort of idea, right? That becomes part of the main story later on. Uh for her sister, Kohaku has a sister named Ruri, and Ruri is, uh, of course, the priestess of the village and stuff, but when Senku and Kohaku arrive at the village, he looks at all the people, and, and you can see the detail in a lot of the characters, and for, as I said, anime-only viewers, it's like, which one of these people is important? Should I remember this person's name? Should I remember this look this person gave? And a lot of them are, because as Kohaku says, numbering roughly around 40 people here, and Senku's like, whoa! Okay, so he believes, right off the bat, he believes that there was somebody like him that was about, probably about a first-generation scientist or someone with enough intelligence uh, who, from the first generation of people that broke out of the stone statues, that clearly built this up because this village is very primitive, yet the people are advanced enough that it doesn't make total sense that they would come to, to this conclusion on their own through just natural. Like, he, this is his only logical conclusion right now, right? So... They get to the gate, and Ginro and uh, Kinro, they stop, of course, their spears, and they're like, Senku, you know, and they're trying to stop Senku. Kohaku being a warrior, just like, shing, you know, sort of idea. Her doing her whole uh, thing, and there's this whole thing about outsiders outside the villages. Outsiders, like, there's stone statues, and anybody outside the village must be a criminal. No outsiders in the village, that kind of deal, right? The rest of the episode goes on to show us that... Uh, after kind of trying to convince them, like, okay, yeah, but he saved my life, no rules, no exceptions sort of idea. Then we get the introduction of Chrome. Now, a lot of people, or Chrome, a lot of people like Chrome, or Chrome. I, I, I don't know how people pronounce his name, in all honesty. Like, the, I, I don't get a real feel for which way the Japanese one is lending right now. Uh, but I'm going to go with Chrome for now. Um, if you guys want me to call him Chrome, just let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, but but Krom here, he is a, I wouldn't say, I'm, I'm not fully sure. A lot of people seem to like him. I, I, I guess for now I'll call him a fan favorite. I don't really, I don't hate the character. I mean, he's just not one of my favorite characters, so I don't know the big the big hubbub about Krom. But he is what, he, he's a self-pronounced genius sorcerer. And he shows up and he's like, ah, you know, because uh, what Senku does is, of course, he takes some of the hot water, he takes a bit of the, the bar of soap he made, and he creates bubbles to see what level they're at. And he's like, huh, okay, they're at this level of, of intelligence right now. This is their level of primitiveness. Okay, now I know what I have to kind of work with. He's trying to figure out what level they're truly at right now. And, I mean, he's still amazed by the size of the village and the four, and the number and stuff like that, right? Uh and Crumb shows up, like, I'm not going to lose in a battle of, of sorcery, you sorcerer sort of idea, but here we're going to have this battle of sorcery, and we better take it across the way, because we don't want the village to get damaged or involved. So he lights a fire, and he does, of course, the trick that we've all done as kids and stuff, but uh, which you buy the little flame packets in the store sort of idea, to turn the flames 
blues and yellows and purples and greens and stuff like that. He's basically doing the same thing, and Senku realizes it right away because he's throwing the crystals and the stuff into the fire. He's using copper and salt and sulfur and all that stuff, and of course he knows it doesn't must have true copper, so he's like, okay. So he's using the copper sulfate, like the blue crystals in the cave and stuff, and Crumb's like, hmm, 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 hmm. Oh, and then he, like, we see his inner monologue, and he's totally, he's like, this guy's figured it out, what the hell, what the hell. So then he brings out this big ball, and of course, what he's doing with that is creating a static electricity, right? So he, he rubs it really fiercely, then he goes up and says, check out this sorcery, and then he touches someone. Of course, static, when you come close enough, you don't actually need to contact necessarily, but as long as you're close enough, and he zaps uh, Kinro, or is it Ginro? Uh, I, I always confuse the two, in all honesty. Um, I think it's, uh, I think it's, I think it's Kinro. Anyways, or is it Kinro? Ah, whatever. The more scaredy cat one, not the one that gets the golden spear. I'm, I'm bad with Japanese. I know one, like, Gin means gold, and Kin means silver, or vice versa, or whatever, however it means. Uh, but suffice it to say, is that he basically right here is is Senku's just showing him up. All of his uh, all of his sorcery techniques, all of Crumb's sorcery is simply uh, very rudimentary, you know, elementary school science class. However, as Senku recognizes here, he goes, "Did you do this all yourself?" Sort of idea. Like you've you've had no knowledge of this stuff yet. You've figured this out through trial and error like a true scientist. He recognizes what Crom has been doing, and Crom tells him after he discovers the storehouse and stuff, and he loses, loses to him with uh, arithmetic and all that stuff, he eventually uh, he wins the, the hut and Crom services for the kingdom of science. And when he goes in there, he realizes that the whole collecting stuff, right, and the whole trial and error, like trying new things, breaking things together, figuring everything out, that is what makes a scientist. Scientists don't get deterred because, oh, well, I smashed this rock and this rock together. They made something, but, uh, I mean, whatever. No, no, no. They're like, okay, well, what else? Which rock was it that made this X? And what else can I smash against this to make another, to make Y? You know, that is, it's all trial and error. That's what science is all about. And he recognizes that rudimentary uh, curiosity and that and that mindset in Crom, and he says, Sukasa will come to kill you one billion percent, ten billion percent, right? There's no doubt in my mind, you're you are the type of person that Sukasa wants nothing to do with. So he takes over the hut for the kingdom of science. They realize they have all these rocks and all this stuff, and he's looking through, he's like, Oh, you collected this, you collected that, you collected the other thing, and he's he's really excited about all this, right? So Senku and Crom are kind of excited. Uh, we get a little bit of a, a small side story where he tries to uh, like win over, I think it's Ginro. Once again, I'll, I'll get it better next time, guys, but I always confuse them. So Ginro, uh, I believe, is the one who gets the golden spear, the more serious one. There's rules, rules, rules. So he dips his stuff. He's like, what practicality does it have? None, but it's golden because your name is Gin with Ginro so, or whatever. So he looks at it. He's like, hmm, he's like, you think you'll win me over with this? And he looks up and he thinks about like, oh yeah, he looks like Tsukasa with like a lion's cape on him with this golden spear and shield. And he's like, well, it's not bad. And he walks away with it. So he's like, ah, it's starting to break him down a little bit. Then we get a little bit with uh, Kohaku and her sister Ruri, uh, where she's the high priestess or the priestess of the village. She's talking to her a little bit. And it's nothing, it's nothing too major we need to worry about right now. The final part is... Krom and Senku having a serious conversation in the dead of night sort of idea. They're having this fire and Senku is basically explaining. He's like, Krom, I guess I'm just going to tell you. Here's how this all happened. Here's humanity. This stone world happened. And he explains all the history of the world. He explains humanity. He explains the evolution, the civilizations that existed before, the technology, the advancements. Then he explains the petrification and the 3,700 years that have passed and to where they are currently. And Senku m might have told him a little bit about his journey. We don't really see that here in this episode, but I'm sure he, and here I am sort of idea. We see Krom weeping and bawling and crying. And Senku's like, why are you crying for? You know, like, you know, doing his whole ear thing, you know, where he's always digging it with his pinky and going, you know, what are you crying for, man? Like, sort of idea. And I, and I expected him to say, like, why are you sad for me or something? And 
Crumb says, no, I, I, damn it, I'm not crying. Then he goes, shit, I am crying. And the reason he's crying, and this makes total sense for Crumb's character, as Senko has recognized this, is that, that he's so mad at how that petrification ray happened. He's so mad at the big green light, whoever caused it, whoever made that happen. He's pissed because now, I mean, Crumb wasn't born then, so it's one of those things, but he's just so mad because all these advancements, all these wonderful things that Crumb could only have possibly dreamed about. They all were real. They all actually happened. We didn't just learn how to fly. We learned how to travel to the moon. We learned how to create technologies like cell phones and, and cars and all these advanced things, you know. And this is all Crom is interested in. This, his rudimentary mind, that's what he's doing in this hut for his whole life. Been collecting different materials, banging them together, heating them up, cooling them down, trying to figure out how to make new inventions, make new things. He's got a scientific mind and he realizes that he isn't the first one to figure it out. It's not like our human history where electricity had never been harnessed before. And it's like, it's not something that we had and we lost. They never had it. Here, you're, you're going basically back in time and telling like people from a stone world, no, all that stuff, all the stuff that's going to be invented, all the stuff that's going to be figured out by all the inventors and philosophers of the world, it's already happened. It just was lost. And he, as a, as a scientist, and Crom is basically a scientist. He calls himself a sorcerer, but we know this. This is where Crom's character really shines right here in this ending part of the episode. It's my favorite part of the episode because he realizes he's so mad at the people that would ever, we've lost all this. How are we ever going to get it back? And he's so upset because he believes it's all lost. And Senku even points at his brain. He's like, right here, buddy. Don't worry about it. He goes, all of human history and all of civilization, everything that we lost is right up here. And we're going to get it all back. And he inspires Krom with that. And forevermore, that is what cinches the deal between Krom always following and working for Senku because he realizes that everything, the the amount of knowledge in Senku's brain is worth following because it's everything Crumb wanted. So I really like this episode. It really showcases Crumb very early on, establishes him so fast as a, as I said, not my favorite character, but a fan favorite character to be sure. And I mean, I, I have to appreciate Crumb here. I really do. As I said, I, I like the character. Not my favorite, but I do like the character. And this was a highlight. The best moment of the episode. Really good. The tone was there. The music was there. It, it, it fit perfectly. The music was really intense in that moment when he's, when he's talking about being pissed off and stuff. And he's worried that they lost it all. We had it. How could this happen? You know, and realizing that all these thousands of years, you know. And Senku's like, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Because we're going to skip millions of years like we're going to jump from like i'm going to start making drones and cars and and we're going to go to the moon because remember senku's whole thing is he just wants to go to that damn moon he wants to go to space that's his thing since he was a kid that's all he wants to do he wants to get us back to a civilization where he can travel back to the moon or travel to space that's what he wants to get back to he wants to get us back to where we are right now in the reality so Good on you, Senku. Good on you, Krom. This is really interesting. I like Ohaku. I like uh, Ginro and Kinro. I, I like all these characters. We see a little bit of uh, Kasaki here in this uh, in this episode, along with a couple other characters. So, I mean, uh, they're all going to be very relevant, and people are going to have their own fan favorites. But uh, tell me what you guys thought of the episode. Sorry for the lateness of it once again. What did you think of the uh, episode? What do you think of the review? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please like, subscribe, comment. As always, it's always very much appreciated. This has been Griever with your episode review for episode 7 of Dr. Stone. We'll see you back here next time, guys. As I said, in probably in a couple of days for the episode 8 review. Then we'll be back on schedule for episode 9 of Dr. Stone. Have a good day, guys. We'll see you next time. Peace.